everybody, Ace Channel here, and welcome back to another episode of Metro Mania. We are well into the quarterfinals now. In fact, the quarterfinals are almost over. We have just one more place to confirm for our semi-finals. As we see, Archie last week overcame Cyrus, sent him back to whatever dimension he wants to live in. Now Archie needs an opponent. Now, is it going to be Gatesis or is it going to be Luzamine? Let's find out. So here we go, as they say in old London town. I'm going down shops. Do you want anything? Maybe a Milky Way. Right, let's get into this. As we see Poison Tail from Hydreigon, super effective into Clefable. So Hydreigon and King Gambit starting things out for Getsis. And Clefable and Lilligant starting things out for Luzamine. As Lilligant drops a Volt Tackle into King Gambit. There, little tiny bit of recoil damage. Not a great deal of damage dealt, though, to King Gambit itself. Here's Clefable now for Luzamine. Going for Poison Gas. Gonna land it into both opponents. Of course, it doesn't actually affect King Gambit, so the animation shouldn't have shown it affecting it just saying but Hydreigon will take that poison right there and that's going to slowly tick away at its HP King Gambit now firing Heat Crash as its first move of the battle completely takes out Lilligant from the get go goodbye thanks for coming Lilligant so gets his off to a great start there against Luzamine what a great play by the ever so heavy King Gambit and Miss Magius now joins the field Miss Magius for Luzamine, and it's going to get straight in there with a drill run. If that would have been into King Gambit, that would have been a great move. But, oh, it was into King Gambit, but just missed anyway. If that would have landed, that would have been great. Here's growth from Hydreigon. I thought it went for the Levitate Pokemon, to be honest. Up goes the attack and special attack of Hydreigon by one stage apiece, and now we have Clefable, raring and ready to go. Goes for Raw. It's going to remove Hydreigon from proceedings and force an, un an unplanned switch for the Getsis side, and we're getting Sneasler in res well, I say in response, Getsis didn't really have a choice, but Sneasler has been dragged out by that roar there, and King Gambit now is going to go corrosive gas and destroy everybody's berry on the field there, by Sneasler, by Clefable, by Miss Magius, none of you have got your leper berries now, so if you're in this battle for too long, you will be forced to struggle. As we see Sneasler go for Scorching Sands, doesn't affect the levitating Miss Magius, but will affect the... Uh, wait, did that miss Clefable? Whoa! I missed something. Here we see Mystical Power into Sneasler there for super effective damage. Good lord. And up goes Miss Magius' special attack by one stage. Still can't decide if it's Magius or Magius. Both have, you know, good, uh, good arguments. King Gambit taking that Hurricane, but unfortunately is confused for the time being will that be a factor going forward we're about to find out as king gambit is very much confused and hits itself in confusion not a great look there but a great look is subscribing to this channel and turning on all notifications so that you never miss a lovely episode of this series here's extreme speed into miss magius unfortunately sneeze like that's not going to work on a ghost site and now miss magius is ready to go with that metronome goes for leah that's not a good idea because it will drop Sneasler's defense, and it will drop King Gambit's defense, but now King Gambit is at plus two because of that Defiant ability. Here comes Clefable now, getting ready with the Metronome. What's it going to do as a follow-up? It's going to go for Disable, meaning King Gambit will have to do 25% of its own health in recoil damage to itself every time it, it does one of those uh, lovely struggles there. Here comes Sneasler now with a Mach Punch again into the Ghost type. Sneasler really struggling to under the, understand the concept of the Ghost type. Crazy that. Here comes Miss Magius now with Axel Rock into King Gambit trying to get rid of that big, big threat that's sitting on the field. And Clefable now has an opportunity. Ignore the broken menu on the screen. That's, you know, just Scarlet and Violet being wonderful. Seed Bomb though from Clefable will be enough to take the seven hit points off Sneasler. What a waste Sneasler has been in this battle. Did it really do anything of note? Here comes King Gambit now. It is confused though. It's a plus two attack. It's gonna struggle. And it's gonna go into that Miss Magius for huge damage because of that attack boost. But there's the recoil damage. I think King Gambit can only really take one more of those. It might be better off hitting itself in confusion, to be honest. Backscalibur coming out. Four gets this now. Big hit into Miss Magius, but not enough. It raises the speed of Excalibur, but not enough there to take Miss Magius out of contention. And we'll see it fire back now with Focus Blast. That'll be super effective. Landing it into King Gambit. King Gambit is out of there. The threat has been dealt with. Great call. By 
by Mr. Magius there to really deal with the uh, the looming danger that was a plus two attack King Gambit. We've all been there. Here comes Clefable now, who's going to go for Curse and lower its speed, which it doesn't really care about. It's the slowest thing on the field. But raise, very importantly, its attack and its defense stat by one stage apiece. Great choice of move there. And now, oh look, a second backscalibur, because that first backscalibur was Zorok. Are you paying attention? This is very confusing. Illusion, go brrr. Mud shot, though, from the backscalibur that's actually Zorok into Clefable, dropping its speed by another stage. It's now at minus two. Miss Magius is going to go for Slash into Zorok, but it's actually backscalibur. But Illusion wears off, so now it is Zorok. That makes things very, very simpler for Liam's tiny brain. Here comes the real backscalibur now with muddy water into both opponents there. Miss Magius goes down and Clefable gets the all-important accuracy drop. Very sad move for uh, Clefable. Very great move for Getsis there. Clefable though is going to wrap up this turn for its team by going for Fire Punch into Zorok, but it is avoided by Zorok. That the uh, accuracy drop from the Muddy Water paying dividends. Here's Lycan Rock now for Luzamine as Zorok gets itself ready. Goes for Mountain Gale into Clefable and does a little bit of chip damage there. Not a great deal, but now Baxcalibur with the follow-up is going to go for Swift into both opponents there. Clefable just barely hanging on and of course Lycanroc eating it up like it's a lovely tasty dinner. Here's Grassy Terrain now from Lycanroc. Going to slowly heal up everybody on the field, but very importantly, slowly heal up its good friend Clefable. That could help increase Clefable's staying power in this battle. Unfortunately, it, the Clefable itself does flinch as a result of the previous attacks. Uh, I believe I believe that's from the Mountain Gale, but does get a little bit of recovery from that grassy terrain, as does everybody that needs recovery on the field. Takedown, though, from Zorok is enough to take out Clefable, so Clefable is out of here, and now it's all down to three remaining Pokemon for Luzamine there. Here comes back Scalibur now. Following up, it's going to go for Smokescreen and once again, lower the accuracy on Lycanroc. So Lycanroc at minus one now. What will it do here? In response to all this, it's going to go for Defense Curl and protect itself, which sounds like a great idea to curl up and hear from our sponsors. You know what I'm going to say. You know what I'm going to bring up. And you low-key know that you get a little bit excited for this bit. Because you can basically quote the whole thing when I talk about G Fuel! Hell yeah! It's bloody G Fuel. I was well excited then. Mate, I know I like G Fuel, but bloody, that was something else then, wasn't it? Hell yeah! Mate, I'm drinking G Fuel. It's an energy formula with barely any calories, zero sugar, and a whole heap of wonderful flavors like my favorite flavor at the moment, which is the Mortal Kombat 1 flavor, Dancing Dragon. It's dragon fruit and mango, and it's absolutely banging. I really wanted to say bango then. And I didn't, and I'm upset that I hedged. What's even better is you can use our code, code ACE, to save yourself 20% off your G Fuel order, sometimes 30% off certain items. Make sure you have a little looky round at the things that you like. And in doing so, you'll also be supporting this channel in the absolute best way possible. So thank you very much in advance to everybody that uses code ACE. Oh, it really is so good. Like, I want Nemesis tea back still, but this is such a good substitute as well. Like, it's absolutely friggin' amazing. Make sure you get some of this. Get any of the wonderful flavors. There are, like, over 50 flavors you really can't miss. There is something for everybody over at gfuel.com. Remember, though, G Fuel is for over 18s only because it contains caffeine, and children don't need to be anywhere near caffeine. They're annoying enough as it is, and because it contains caffeine, drink it responsibly. Don't be a dickhead, dickhead. And we are back as Luzamine sends out her Glimora. For those keeping score at home, remember this is Nilego, but we don't have Nilego in this game, so deal with it. And we have Shockwave coming out from Zorok on Getsus' side right into that Glimora there. Of course, it's a special attack, so it's not going to trigger the ability toxic debris of Glimora. Black... Uh, Black Scalibur? That's a very different Pokemon. Black Scalibur goes for Future Sight into Glimora there. That will be detrimental to Glimora in, in a couple of turns, I would imagine. But Glimora fires back with a Nuzzle, thus paralyzing the Black Scalibur there. Nuzzle, a beautiful move because it's a way of thunder waving with 100% accuracy and you're not able to be taunted out of it. Great move. Uh, here we see Chloroblast into Black Scalibur. It's not very effective, but will use half of their HP 
of Lycanroc there. So Lycanroc really putting itself in a difficult position in exchange for very little reward there. But the grassy terrain is still in play and is healing everybody up just that little bit as we go along at the end of each turn. Baxcalibur pretty much shrugged off that Chloroblast just then. And now we have Crush Grip into Glamora from Zorok. That's not very effective, but that will activate the Toxic Debris. So anything coming in on Gets as a team that touches the ground that isn't already poisoned, which Gets this doesn't have anymore, because it just has two Levitate Pokemon. He just has two Levitate Pokemon left. They're not going to get poisoned, but... The Toxic Debris, you, you never know. Stranger things have happened. Smackdown exists as a move. But there's Corrosive Gas getting rid of all the Leper Berries on the field. Once again, the second Corrosive Gas of this battle. We see B-Up coming out from the Lycanroc into the Backscalibur there. One hit, two hit, and of course three hits in favor, you know, in uh, honor of Milotic sitting in the back. And what will Backscalibur do in retaliation? It's going to ignore that paralysis and it's going to go for Magic Room, which I think is the one where the held items lose their effects. But given that Corrosive Gas just got rid of the held items. That's really kind of pointless. And Glamora has not been on the field long enough for it to really be affected by that anyway. So great play there, Baxcalibur. Good job, mate. What a wasted turn. As everybody gets healed by that grassy terrain there. Which was a great play by Lycanroc earlier on in the battle. We see Tailwind coming out. Speaking of great plays from Zorok there. So gets his team now has the speed advantage for the next four turns. Over to Baxcalibur. Even paralyzes the fastest thing on the field. Going for Belly Drum. Big balls play under Tailwind as well. Even though, you know, paralyzed. But very dangerous play as well. Plus six attack for the Baxcalibur there. And now we see Brick Break, though, super effective for Glamora. Backscalibur's on two hit points. Oh, my word. Lycanroc has a choice to make here. Goes for Swallow. That's the wrong choice. It's the first time I've ever said that. There's the future site, though, into Glamora. Big damage. Glamora in the danger zone. How Backscalibur survived that turn, I will never know. But if it avoids the paralysis on the next turn and chooses a physical attack, this could be very dangerous for either of Luzamine's Pokemon here. The grassy terrain is now gone. No more healing at the end of each turn for these Pokemon. Zorok is going to go for Judgment into Lycanroc, bringing it down to less than half its max HP. And Baxcalibur once again ignores that paralysis and is going to go for Doom Desire, which is the cringiest move in all of Pokemon. It shows Doom Desire as its destiny. It's so cringe. I hate it. I, I hate it. Thank you, Jirachi, for being rubbish. Mystical Power, though, is enough from Glamora to take down Baxcalibur. The Belly Drum Baxcalibur not going to be a threat here. The special attack of Glamora goes up by one stage. And now we are down to three versus three. Lycanroc goes for that metronome now. What's it going to do here? It's going to go for Growl and lower the attack stat of the Zorok there. Although Zorok not known for its physical prowess. Electros joins the field as the Earth apparently disappears for a brief moment. Peak game, Scarlet and Violet there. Still my faves. Here's Spikes now. Not really worth it from Zorok unless you've got some mad Roar and Whirlwind play in like planned. But at least it'll damage Milotic on the way in, which is going to be a big Pokemon to take down. Electros goes for Darkest Larry into Glamora. That is going to activate the Toxic Debris one more time. But Glamora is going to go down. So now it is Zorok, Hydreigon in the back, who is poisoned, and Electros versus Lycanroc, Midnight, and Milotic. Lycanroc goes for Drill Run, though, into the Levitate Pokemon. Electros, that could have been a great play into the Zorok, but unfortunately, not a great choice here, uh, choosing an Electros. Milotic is damaged by the spikes there as it enters the battle, the final member of Luzamine's team, but has been shown to be a very, very strong, important member of her team as uh, Zorok fires off a Tita Dance, confusing its own partner Pokemon, but in the process also confusing both opponents, which is the big important point there. So Lycanroc and Milotic both confused, as well as, as we see the Electros on this side. Is it going to fight through the confusion? No, it's going to hit itself. So a backfire on that Tita Dance right there from Getsis. And now we have Lycanroc. Will that fight through the confusion? It will not. So that's a benefit to the Tita Dance. We have one more Pokemon that is confused on the field. It's Milotic. Is it going to do the same? It's not. It's going to ignore the confusion and go for that Metronome. And now it's going to fire a Super Fang, which is a great play into Electros there. The Pokemon with effectively no weaknesses. There's the Doom Desire. And down goes Lycanroc. Super effective. See you by Lycanroc. It was never going to survive a Doom Desire. Uh, so now 
unfortunately, the Tailwind ends, but unfortunately for... Um, oh, the Magic Room ended, by the way, for those who care. Uh, unfortunately for Luzamine, she's down to one Pokemon. Ice Punch, though, from Lycanroc, not very effective into Milotic. Milotic has a lot of Bolt to deal with, but it's also confused, and that is very dangerous. It's going to ignore that confusion once again, though, as it prepares its chosen move. Goes for Giga Impact. That will have a recharge turn, though. Big damage into Zorok, but not a great choice to move when you are when you know you're going to have to recharge next turn. Electros is confused, though. Goes for the Metronome now. What will Electros choose here? It's going to go for Psych Up and copy the non-existent stat changes of Milotic. I'm pretty sure Milotic has no stat changes, so great play there. Here's Zorok now, though. Zorok's going to go for Ancient Power, maybe hoping to get that Omni Boost. All of its stats raised at once. It does not get it. Milotic must recharge, and now it's over to Electros to start the next turn, but it is still suffering with that confusion, but it manages to fight through, gets the Metronome prepared, and goes for Flash Cannon. That's not going to be very effective. Into Milotic. Don't ask me why I was clipping into the ground. Scarlet and Violet. Peak game. Why is... Electros not sat upright like we know he can. Luster Purge, though, from Zorok into Milotic there, bringing it ever so close to the danger zone. Milotic fights through the confusion here. What will it do? It needs a miracle at this point. It's got three opponents to take down. Goes for Body Slam into Electros. Not enough to take Electros down. And Electros does snap out of that confusion now. Ready with that metronome. What is it going to do? It's going to go for Eerie Spell. Shades of Galarian Slowpoke there, which will do a little bit of damage into Milotic but removes three power points from Milotic's metronome, which is going to be detrimental going forward as the Zorok raises its defense by one stage with Harden. It's a very difficult position for Milotic right now, but we've seen Pokemon come back from worse. Here's Retaliate from Milotic into Zorok. Barely any damage, though. Not a great look as Electros once again is ready and raring to go here. Goes for Screech, lowering the defensive stat of Milotic by two stages. Milotic is in a world of trouble right now. Here comes Zorok now. What will it do? Going to go for Speed Swap and make Milotic the second fastest Pokemon on the field. Not sure what that's about, but maybe that's just a bit of overconfidence. As we see, as the three minutes on the battle left timer turns up, we get a Burning Bulwark, which is completely pointless at this stage of the round, is it not? Because that's the last move of this turn. Yeah, yeah, so that was a waste of Burning Bulwark. Here comes uh, Ivy Cudgel. Oh no, it does still carry over to the next turn. That That's something I didn't know about Burning Bulwark. So the Ivy Cudgel is blocked by Milotic there. Or maybe I just lost track of the turn order. Who knows? But here's a Brine, double powered because less than half HP into Milotic. Milotic is suffering right now. Just the one or two hit points left. Goes for Bitter Blade though. Oh, we love a Bitter Blade. We do. Not very effective into Zorok, but will just restore. Oh no, not no, it's neutral. It's a fire type move, Liam. Chill out. But it will drain a little bit of HP back from that Zorok there. He is Electros now with that Metronome, and it's going to go for Bar Barrage. That's going to be it with the minus two defense. Down goes Milotic and gets this with a dominant victory. Goes through to the semi-finals. He will be facing Archie in a couple, in a couple of episodes time. Because obviously we've got the first semi-final to come first, which is going to be Cynthia taking on Leon to decide who represents the good side in our grand finals, which is going to be awesome. Thank you as always to our wonderful Ace Trainer Ultra XL members, Bro Metapod, Purple Dragonair, Toy Bonnie, Gear Overlord, Mumbai Cobra, Night Angel, Gamer Guy Mike, Cap Rider, Blue Malibu, and Bogey Taker. Thank you for your massive support. It means the world to us. And of course, don't forget to use code Ace for money off G Fuel. And until next time, I'm Ace Trainer Liam. Keep on training.